Okay, so today I'm going to talk about pure cultures. And so this is information that you need to know for, you know, slash quiz lecture exam number two. Um, but also it's going to be really important in setting up lab number five, um, which is called dilution techniques. Um, so you'll actually see this video posted here under lecture videos, but then I'm also going to post it um, under lab five under the lab materials tab. Okay. So if you can remember back to lab two, so you had your auger plate, okay, where you sampled from wherever you chose to sample. One of the definitions I gave um, during that lab was the definition of a colony. And so a colony, again, is basically a pile of bacteria that grew from a single bacterial cell. And that's also how we define a pure culture. So when we have a pure bacterial culture, it's made up of bacteria that derive from a single cell. And so therefore it's only a single bacterial species. Okay, so examples here, whenever you see, you know, these little piles of bacteria that are off by themselves, those are single colonies. And therefore we know it's a single species of bacteria. And technically each one of those colonies is a pure culture. So also remember, I talked about this in lab two, is that when we're talking about medical microbiology, okay, meaning that someone has an infection um, or, you know, is experiencing some type of disease that is caused by a microbe, um, most cultures are gonna be mixed because remember, you're covered in bacteria and also yeast cells. Um, it both in and on you. And so if you take a swabbing from an abscess from someone's skin or a throat culture, or look at a stool sample, you're gonna end up with lots and lots of different types of microbial species, mostly bacterial species, but 99% of them are gonna be good guys, okay? And then you have to try to find the one bad guy that is causing the infection. So your original plate from let's say a throat culture may look like this, and then you have to try to figure out, okay, which one of those species is the bad guy? So what we wanna do first is take a mixture of those species and then let's try to dilute them so um, that we can get individual colonies. Because when you look at something like this, it's just way too concentrated, okay? We can see that there are multiple species growing there because of the different colors and the different appearance to the naked eye of those colonies, but they're just in too high of a concentration. So let's try to spread them out and make sure that when we're gonna do future tests, like the gram stain or maybe an acid fast stain um, or different types of biochemical tests, let's make sure that we're dealing with a pure culture. So the way we do that, first of all, let's gonna let's dilute that bacteria, okay? And here's the big wordy definition of what we're gonna do. Yeah, you're basically, you know, when we when you usually think of dilution, you think of pouring, you know, a certain volume into a larger volume, like of water, and then that's how you dilute it. Well, we're gonna do the same thing, but we're gonna do it on the solid surface of the auger and we're gonna do it using our bacterial incinerator and then your inoculating loop. And so the technique that we're gonna use is called the streak plate technique. And this is what we're gonna learn to do in lab five when you come back to um, lab in a couple of weeks. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so here's kind of, you know, in a nutshell, the streak plate technique. And the key is, that every time you streak on the auger with your inoculating loop, you are gonna put that loop in the incinerator, which remember works as kind of a bacterial crematorium, and you're gonna bring whatever bacterial concentration was on that loop back to zero. So doing the different streaks, in the first streak, the bacteria is you know, pretty concentrated. You're gonna flame the loop, then you're gonna do a second streak, but you're just gonna hit the first streak a few times, okay? So this is gonna dilute the bacteria. You incinerate the loop again, bring it back to zero. And now with your third streak, you go back and hit that second streak 
just a few times. So remember, this was the most concentrated, this is less concentrated, and because you're hitting the second streak, the blue here is even less concentrated. Okay, and then for a final streak, you're gonna incinerate one more time and then go back and just hit th streak number three. And so when you let the, the plate sit in the incubator and then look at it you know, in two weeks, what you should see is really concentrated bacteria and then it gets less concentrated, less concentrated. And by the time you get over to streak number four, hopefully what you see are individual colonies slash pure cultures of the bacteria. Okay, so it's just a way of diluting bacteria simply by always uh, incinerating your loop in between streaks. So ideally, this is what it would look like, okay? So here we have a mixed culture. We have one bacterial species that produces a purple pigment, and so it looks purple to your eye. The other one produces pink colonies, so it looks pink to your eye, or it produces a pink pigment, I should say. So this would be streak number one, where it's really concentrated. Then the person incinerated their loop, and then went back and hit this first streaking just a couple of times. So what, when we get to streak number two, yeah, the colonies are still pretty small because they're very concentrated, but it's less, okay? They're gonna incinerate their loop again, come back and hit just streak number two. And so you're starting to see here even more separation. Finally, incinerate the loop one more time. And then by the time you get to streak four, now you can see really individualized separate colonies, which are, um, you know, which show uh, separate species and pure cultures. So really compare this where it's undiluted over to here, which is, you know, very diluted on the fourth streak. So this is the technique that you're going to learn in lab five, and hopefully your plate is going to look very similar to this. So in lab five, I'm gonna give you a mixed culture and it's gonna be liquid and you're gonna use this method to separate the two species. And I'll tell you right up front what the species are, okay? So it's a mixture of E. coli, which grows tan on agar, and then Serratia marzacens, which produces a red pigment, and so that looks red to your naked eye, okay? So here's the difference between the two, and we use these two simply because they're different colors, and so you're able to see the differences, you know, with your eye. So ideally, this is what it's gonna look like. So th this is an example of a mixture of E. coli and serratia. Now in here, they're using just three streaks. We're actually gonna use four. But yeah, it's gonna be kind of a reddish orange, but look at how concentrated it is, okay? You can't see individual colonies. They're in there, but there's probably, you know, hundreds of thousands of colonies and there's no room for them to grow. And that's why it looks more like smears of bacteria. And then when you do the streaking, finally, when you get over here, you're gonna see individual red colonies and individual tan colonies. That's what you're going for. So this is the procedure for the streak plate, okay? So, you know, it's probably a good idea um, to bring, um, you know, the procedure. Uh, of course, lab five, you wanna, that has the procedure in it as well, so bring that. But the key is you never go back to the original streak because that's the most concentrated, okay? You only want to streak from the previous streaking. That's how you're gonna get your dilution. Okay, so here's an example. This is a plate that was taken from an actual you know, student. Um, so yeah, it was really concentrated here as they work around the plate. By the time you get over to streak number four, you can see individual tan and red colonies. Now here's an example of a plate, right? That's not the desired result that we want, but this is a student who, um, you know, put, you know, did their best, okay? And it, this is a super common mistake. Um, so keep in mind, if your streak plate technique doesn't look perfect, um, you know, you're not gonna get points off because you're doing this for the first time and, you know, not doing it perfectly is actually a good way to learn how to improve your technique. Um, 
But the key is to follow directions and try to do your best, okay? So what happened here is uh, if they incinerated their loop, they got the, the first, you know, culture on there, so it's nice and concentrated, and then they incinerated their loop, but they didn't go back and hit the first streaks, okay? And it's kind of a delicate balance because you want to press hard enough into the auger that you can actually see the streak lines because remember the bacteria isn't going to appear there instantaneously it's going to take about 48 hours in the incubator for it to start to show up um, but they just didn't see the streak marks and so they did their best and they went back here and streak but they actually didn't hit the first streak and so if you don't hit the first streak, you're not going to see the other streaks. But, you know, it was a good effort. Um, they just, you know, they can learn from that. Okay, I'm also going to have you do a plate that is bad on purpose so that you can see the differences. So this is the plate where you're, I'm going to have you do the streaks, but not incinerate in between. And look at what a huge difference it makes. Okay, there's no dilution whatsoever. Um, you basically can't see any individual colonies. There's no good separation. So the key is you have to incinerate the loop in between or um, you know, you're not going to get the desired result. Okay, the other thing I want to point out is that remember in microbiology lab there's a lot of stuff floating around in the air okay and because it's bacteria we can't see it so one of the things i want to caution you about as well is unless you're actively streaking your sample put your lid back on your plate and the reason is it's going to hopefully lower the chance that you get a contaminant okay and a contaminant the definition is it's a bacterium that was not in the original culture, but that somehow ends up on your plate. Okay, so we know it's in that original mix five that I'm gonna give to you, right? It has E. coli, which grows tan, and it has serratia, which grows red. And look at this, you've got this cluster of yellow colonies, okay? And they're kind of light yellow in color. It's most likely Staph aureus, which is a common skin bacteria that somehow made its way onto the plate. So there's a couple of different ways how we can tell what a contaminant is. First of all, it ends, it usually looks completely different from everything else that's on the plate, okay? And this certainly fits that correct criteria, right? It's yellow, okay? We know that we're supposed to have just red and tan. So yellow colonies, that's obviously gonna be a contaminant. The other way you can tell is normally it's not on a streak line. So, you know, there's streak lines here, there's streak lines here. Um, I think they may have missed the third one, but, and then out of the blue, here you have these yellow colonies. So they're not following the typical streak pattern. And normally, I mean, if you happen to see like a green fungus growing off to the side, it doesn't look like anything else. It's not on a streak line that is going to show you that it's actually a contaminant. It's not supposed to be there. Somehow that plate got contaminated. So in micro, contaminants are things we don't want because they can completely mislead your diagnosis of what is making that patient sick. You know, lead you off on a totally different, um, you know, type of testing when it's something that wasn't in the sample to begin with. It's from an outside contaminant. Okay, so keep that in mind as well. Put your lid on your plate unless you are actively streaking. Okay, that's what pure culture says. All right, thank you.